So we understand aggregating domain driven design and we know that nesting aggregates is as bad as it gets. Now here's a dilemma. What should we do in scenarios where a certain business rule involves working with several aggregates at a time? And trust me, this type of scenario is very common and it often generates a lot of frustration and even despair. So either we conclude that DDD is bad or that we are too dumb to actually understand DDD. Trust me, you are not too dumb and this video will completely change your life when it comes to DDD. Because the way you look at software, the way that you understand software will never be the same after you're about to understand the concept that I want to talk about in this video, so bear with me. Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. For this video I have prepared an end-to-end -end application that is tailored to showcase exactly the concepts that I want to discuss in this video. So don't take this as a ready-to-use template for production-ready application because really we just concentrate on the topic that I want to present. However, we have modeled our domain according to domain-driven design. So the application is actually very simple. The idea is that we can play a game of chess. And if we build a chess application at a certain point, if two players play a game, one of them will win or either it will end it in a draw, but the game will end. So we need an end point kind of like to perform some logic when a game ends. So this is what we do here. We have this app map post and the end point is games, the game ID and the result. This is clearly that if we have a game, we want to set the result for that game. Now, pretty easy stuff until now and we use the mediator to basically send this command because it changes the state of the application so it is a command and then we have of course our application layer in which we have our end chess game command and command handler we have placed them in the same file now the idea is that what we are using here we are faking also some data access we just have some repositories that are in memory so it's nothing really interesting with them but the idea is that when a game of chess ends what we need to do here okay we get a white player we get a black black player from the repository and then what we want to do is well set the game result well get the game and set the game result now on the game we have this end game method according to how we should model an aggregate and once again this solution is tailored to showcase what we want to concentrate on today so here probably it will go a lot more logic than just simply the result the idea is that we set the result which contains basically a result enum and a result reason enum so nothing really really fancy but once again this is an aggregate and we have this logic encapsulated to the aggregate so the aggregate can keep track of all the business rules that are needed or that need to be implemented when we want to end the game of chess now coming back to our handler the next step that we would like to do is calculate the new rating of the players so usually when you play a game of chess when the game ends each player has a rating with which it starts the game now when the game ends usually the player that wins will have his rating go up the player who loses will have his rating or her rating go down now if it ends in a draw the rating will stay more or less the same now here comes the challenge because when we end the game Ending the game itself and setting the result is not the only thing that we want to do. We also want to calculate the new rating of the players. And that's what exactly what we want to do in this application. And we have outlined this here with this step to calculate the new rating of the players. But then comes the question, where do we actually want to put this logic for calculating the rating? The first drive would be to move everything or to calculate this in the aggregates because we have discussed earlier aggregates are really very important in domain driven design and aggregates or, or aggregate routes are the place where we do a lot of stuff and make sure that all the business rules are correctly applied for that specific aggregate. However, what would that mean in our case? If we go here on the player aggregates, we virtually have to aggregate the player and the game, of course. Now for the player we have here a very very simple player once again this demo app is only tailored to showcase what we want to discuss in this video and probably in a real application that you want to model a chess game things would be a little bit more complex than that but we have a name for the player and we have this idea of rating now what we do we initially set this rating to 1200 for each new instance of a player and then we have here already these two methods like increase rating and decrease rating 
And those methods are really important and actually these methods belong to this aggregate because when we want to increase the rating or to decrease the rating, probably there are some business rules that need to be enforced. Like for instance, the rating cannot go below zero or the rating cannot go below a certain point or above a certain point. So there are surely some business rules that needs to be applied here. So it's okay that we have this increased rating. However, the only problem with this player is that it doesn't really know by how much it should increase the rating of a certain player or by how much it should decrease the rating of the other player. Because when we have an instance of player, we just know all the information about that specific player, but not about the other players. So placing this logic for calculating the new rating or adjusting the rating for each player that was involved in a certain game cannot easily be done here in the player aggregate. So let's move to the next aggregate, which is the game aggregate. Now the game aggregate also is very, very simple and tailored to only showcase what we need in this video. Now we have very basic a constructor for the game and we have a white player ID and a black player ID. Now these things are important because a game without a white player and a black player would not make sense. So the game itself might need to understand if in this game there is a player that is involved and if there is a black player that is involved. Because otherwise, if we don't have two players, then the game cannot exist. It violates the business rule. However, the players themselves are aggregates, like a player is an aggregate. So we cannot simply nest aggregates or a player aggregate in the game aggregate. So the problem is that here this game aggregate should only be responsible to enforce the business rules for the games. Now this business rule for the games does in, doesn't really imply setting the new rating for the players. For that we have the player aggregate that is responsible. Now the only thing that this game aggregate can do is provide this end game method that will simply change the result of the game or will set actually the result of the game. The problem is that also in the game since we don't have the information about the players and their rating and we cannot implement this logic of adjusting their rating. So the solution that a lot of people unfortunately come up with is kind of like still add a player and a second player here like nesting aggregates. And this is actually very, very bad for a few different reasons. First of all, it's crossing consistency boundaries and this is not okay. It's not okay in accordance to domain driven design and generally it is not okay. Then business rules will get very tangled. The business rules of the player will then get tangled with the business rules of the game. And this in turn will lead to the third problem, which is a total spaghetti code in which you have a big, big potential for bugs. And this is for sure something that we want to avoid. Now the question is, okay, but where do we want to put it then? Another tempting approach would be to put everything in the handler because, hey, we have seen that we don't have all the information in the player aggregate. We don't have all the information that we need to do this calculation in the game aggregate. But in the handler, on the other side, we have the players, we have the game, so we can just come and do something like that. Now, of course, the ELO rating itself in chess is calculated through a certain algorithm, so it's more complex than that. But once again, I want to focus on the use case of this video and the problem that we try to solve here. So what we do is here is we check, okay, who won? And if, uh, well, white won, then we increase the rating of white and we decrease the rating of, of black. And we provide here, we increase it by six and decrease it by six. But probably there would be a business logic that would kind of like come up to this number. We have just hard coded that. And the other way around is if uh, black win, then we increase the player or we increase the black's rating and we decrease white's rating. And we don't take into consideration what happens if we have a draw. But right now that's actually our business logic. Now there is a huge problem with that. Because in the handler here, or handler are responsible to handle application use cases. Like what happens, for instance, if a certain user clicks a certain button, or what happens, or what should happen, for instance, if a certain chess game ends, or some 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 of the parts won. 
Now, this would mean, of course, yes, uh, setting the game result, which we see that we have delegated to the domain itself, which is the way that we should do it if we follow domain-driven design. And since for the rating calculation, we cannot really do that, then okay, we will do the calculation by ourselves. However, this is actually very, very bad due to at least two reasons. As said, once again, handlers are responsible to handling application logic and application use case, while calculating a rating is a business rule. The problem is that if we don't do that, here we have a mix between application logic and business logic that makes our code prone to bugs. But before we go into the life-saving idea or new concept in DDD that will help us out, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to this channel if you didn't do this already. And if you have any type of question, just comment here and that would be highly appreciated. It will definitely help the channel to get better. So curious about how we can solve our challenges? Well, meet a new concept from Domain Driven Design, which is called Domain Services. Now, Domain Services actually is just a domain class. And according to Eric Evans, which, by the way, is the father of Domain Driven Design, they have three important characteristics. And I cannot emphasize enough how important those characteristics are. So first of all, operations in that certain domain service relates to a domain concept. In other words, this would mean that it kind of like the operations that we perform in a domain service is also a business rule. Then the second characteristic is that the service, a domain service, works only with elements of the domain. So if we need to pass any parameters or anything to the service or to the method that we need to perform a certain business rule, we do not pass anything or, well, we do not pass anything that's outside our domain layer only classes, entities, aggregates, value objects from our domain layer. And that's really important. Then the third characteristic of a domain service is that the operation is stateless. So the service itself is not used to persist any state. It doesn't hold any state. It just performs a business rule and it returns a result. In other words, we can think about something like a funnel in which we need or we have a certain business rule. So we put in two aggregates or more aggregates and then the service will do some stuff and it will then just simply return either something new, which is also a new domain object or a new entity or a new aggregate, whatever, or it will just change the state of the aggregates. But as we'll see, it the service itself won't really change the state of the aggregates but it will use behavior that are, is exposed by the aggregates to change that specific state. First off, we said that services are actually part of the domain itself because they implement also business rules. That's why I have already pre-created here in our domain layer, this services folder. And in this services folder, I will add a new class and I will call this class rating uh, calculator. And in this rating calculator class is basically where I will implement a new method. So what we have here, we have this calculate rating. Of course, we need to import some references that kind of like are missing right now, but now we are totally ready. So we have this rating calculator class, which is a domain service. And here we have this calculate rating method in which we take in a player, which is the white player. So an aggregate, which is a domain concept. We take in another player, which is the black player. And once again, a domain concept. And then we take in a game, which is also another aggregate. So also a domain concept. So remember the characteristics of the domain service. It should only use aspects from the domain to work with. And now comes a more practical question. How do we use it practically in our application? And I would like to share a very practical approach with you right now. And therefore, or especially for this purpose, I have created this end-to-end -end demo application in which we also have a .NET Core minimal API project. The idea is that as we know, in .NET Core, we have this dependency injection container. And really, there is nothing bad about registering domain services in your DI container of your ASP.NET Core application. So what we could do here is simply come here and say builder.services.add. Let's make it maybe scoped. But since it's stateless, it doesn't really matter. 
And what we want to add here is, of course, this uh, rating calculator. So that's the service that we want to add. And since we have added the service, we can come back here to the handler and we can just refactor our handler a little bit and say that we want to also get in a rating calculator uh, service. Of course, we'll need also a private field for that. So we'll make private read only rating uh, calculator like that. And of course, in the constructor, we just need to assign the rating calculator equals rating calculator, and we should be good to go. And then in the handler, what we can do here is, okay, we did get rid of all the logic that was previously in the handler. So instead, what we can do here is we can just use right now the rating calculator, which once again is a domain service. So in this case, we are delegating this responsibility of calculating and adjusting the ratings of the players to another domain concept, which is the domain service. And it can apply all the business rules that it actually needs. So we just give it or we just call this calculate ratings. So we need the white player, we need uh, the black player and we need the game. And that's it. And before we get one step further, I want to enter another discussion with you because I have added here this service to the DI container directly with the class name, like the rating calculator. And probably you will say or you will see tutorials out there that also for domain services, they kind of like create interfaces. Now, from my point of view, that's actually not a good idea. And there are a few reasons why I think that we don't really need an interface when we register domain services in our DI container. Now, the first thing is that domain services, they do not have dependencies. So they should be able to actually live by their own. And the other reason why I think an interface is needed is needless is that we will never mock them when you want to test services you will never mock anything you just have to unit test it with business logic you just test the business logic and nothing else so they will never be mocked and therefore this would mean that using an interface here that would kind of like just add a useless indirection to our application. So just adding an interface where an interface doesn't actually really make sense. So that's why my practical suggestion is that when you register domain services uh, in your dependency ingestion container in ASP.NET Core, you can do that by directly registering the service itself and don't use an interface for that. Now, there is only one other thing that I want to actually briefly talk about before we wrap this up and I will go back to the handler. This is also a very important part because right now, okay, we have this white player, we have this black player, we have this game. And what happened is that, uh, okay, we have set the game result and we know that this rating calculator basically increased the rating of the white player and decreased the rating of the um, black player. And furthermore, also the game itself uh, had some changes because we have set a result. And this means that we have a lot of state changes across different aggregates. And here's also the reason why I have added these very, very basic repositories, which are in memory repositories. We don't persist anything right now, but if you subscribe to this channel and stay tuned, probably very, very soon, the next videos in this series will be about persisting aggregates, persisting value objects, problems, challenges, and how can we tackle them efficiently. Cool. Now the idea or why it's important because we shouldn't actually lose the focus from the fact that an aggregate is a boundary of consistency. And when we look at an aggregate, basically from the point of view of our application logic, this translates into the fact that an aggregate is also a transactional boundary. So this means that we actually would need to, to save all the changes in dedicated transactions. So that's why I would have here this player repository and I will have white player. And you can assume once again, if you implement this, this should be maybe wrapped in one single transaction, like saving the white player, then player repository, save player state, and we'll save the black player. So this is another transaction. And then we have this uh, game repository. And here we have this 
save game state and we perform this game and this is another transaction and that i wanted to include this in this video because that's a really important concept so the idea of consistency boundaries doesn't really stop at our domain model to wrap this up i want to emphasize once again why is the use of domain services parenting to look into your software and into the application that you design now the first very important reason is that it makes testing much easier the reason for this is that you could very easily unit test the logic that you have in your domain services and for the handlers you can just integration test them for instance to make sure that everything is working fine the second very important thing is that it is a great way to keep aggregates clean and the third reason why this will actually be life-changing is that the application logic and the business rules are, are not mixed together anymore. If you have enjoyed this video and you think that this content might be useful, of course, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you didn't do that already. And if you think that there might be others that would find this content useful, don't be shy and share it with them either at work, with your friends, or in forums, wherever you think that there might be people that would find this content interesting, share it, and probably they will be thankful to you. And if you have any questions or ideas or feedback, or if you just want to say anything, please hit the comment section and let me know what you think about this video and about this channel, and I will be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, until the next time, I wish you the very best.